love New York key players. New York State, it's all here. It's only here. Tonight's starting lineup brought to you by BSN Sports. Ricky McGill, the terrific sophomore point guard. E.J. Crawford on the all-freshman team in the league. Seth Kazmir coming off a big performance. Will he be able to back that up tonight? Deshaun Much and Jordan Washington round out the starting five for the Gales, who are 20 and 12 overall. St. Peter's comes in 19 and 12 with Nick Griffin, Travis Weish, Namdi Anechionia, Chaz Patterson, and Quadir Welton. St. Peter's is the number two seed in this tournament facing Tim Clouse's club that is used to getting to the semis and used to getting here at home. As you said, that'd be their first trip to the final since 2011. For Tim Clouse, it would be his fifth consecutive trip to the MAC championship game and the sixth in seven years. That is a dominant record in the MAC tournament. And as it is, this is Iona's seventh consecutive MAC semifinal and conference record 22nd overall. And dates back to the 81 82 season. And the only time Tip Clues didn't get to the championship game, they lost in the semifinals, and his team still got an at large bid to the NCAA tournament. Weish, Washington flops, no call. And the first bucket of the ball game is by Welton. And a good no call right there. Can't reward the defense if they're just going to fly. Our officials this evening, Rob Riley, Brian O'Connell, and Brandon Cruz. Much the Buffalo transfer, a little long on his first attempt. And the Peacock for the basketball. Griffin feeds the post. Welton with four quick points. Well, when you're playing against Iona, you've got to pound the basketball inside to force Jordan Washington to guard. He has foul trouble, finds himself on the bench just about every game. But on the reverse side of it, when you got a guy like Welton that can score, you also want to play through him no matter who's guarding him. Washington. Air ball long. St. Peter's up 4-0 with the basketball. In they go again. This time Washington comes around, knocks the ball loose, and then throws it off the leg of Griffin out of bounds. Good hustle right there by Washington. Well, you know, this is a classic Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference matchup of two charter members. Iona's got the all-time winningest program in terms of win percentage. 62% of the time they win. And, you know, back in the 80s, before the league really expanded as Casimir misfires, these were the two teams that helped to headline this league along with LaSalle. And Echionia. Again, they go inside to the big man. Welton kicks it back out this time. On the pull-up, and Echionia off the mark. Clean look by Crawford, and the Gales are on the board. It all starts with dribble penetration into the lane. What the Gales do is they spread you out. If you don't keep guys in front of you and keep them out the lane, then your defense gets sucked in. That's when they hit so many of those open threes. And Echionia finds a soft spot along the baseline and connects. Got to move the basketball against the zone, whether it's the straight 2-3 or the matchup will give you different looks out of it. But ball movement is what gets you those good looks. Well, this series dates all the way back to the 1946-47 season, long before the MAC was formed. Iona has won, though, six of the last seven meetings between these two clubs. From the head of the key, Crawford one for two now. St. Peter's with it up by three. And, you know, I mentioned that 2011 championship game that John Dunn and the uh, Peacocks won. Who'd they beat in the finals? Iona. Iona. These two teams met in the very first MAC championship final. Back to the Meadowlands back in the day. Who's tournament MVP that year? You got that in front of you? I know you're fishing through the uh, record book. Now, I couldn't find it. As a matter of fact, I, I didn't even get that one uh, confirmed, but... I think I got I, it right here. I, I remember being at that game. Because Uncle Pat was coaching? Yep, yep, yep. So 
Rory Grimes was the MVP in 82. There you go. As Iona won in overtime over St. Peter's 66-61. Much for two. So my memory's not completely shot, despite the fact that uh, we've been here for a long time so far this weekend. And that was a long time ago. You must have been still in high school back. Yeah, absolutely. Welton to the left hand. That's a nifty looking yeah. shot. Yeah, usually he's just straight post ups with his back to the basket. It shows you he can put it to the floor as well. Six quick points. I enjoyed during the press conference for Iona following their quarterfinal victory, the exchange between Tim Plus and said Casimir. Of course, Casimir coming off of the three surgeries. He lit it up in their quarterfinal win. Coach says, yeah, expect him to score back championships in 86 and 87 with our friend Mitch Bonaguro at the helm. Holy Cross also in the league at that time. But uh, really, these two uh, programs have as much history as anybody with this conference. Hey, you think back to those Fordham teams with Tom Penders. Yep. There have always been so many terrific coaches in this league. Fertile proving ground for guys that have been able to go on and have great success at the high major level. Kevon Baker, just like in last night's quarterfinal, right to the bucket and banking it home. Yeah, he might be a 6-1 guard, but he gets a lot of his points in the paint, whether it's on drives, straight drives, putting it to the floor, or he'll also take other guards inside and post them up. Jordan Washington draws contact. Remember, Army used to be in this league as well, and I looked it up a couple of years ago. I was thinking, was Coach K still at Army when they were in the MAC? And the answer is no. He had left for Duke before Army was in the MAC. So he never coached in this conference. But there's another illustration of uh, this cradle of coaches the conference has been. And none has done better than Iona. Of course, Jim Galvano on to North Carolina State. Your Uncle Pat Kennedy went on to great things at Florida State and beyond. And... Uh, well, I'll let you. You know better the list. You know all yeah. those guys going all the yep, way back. Yep. Certainly, Tim Welsh had great success as well at Providence and now with the SPN. Timmy won a couple of Mac Coach of the Year awards before leaving for Providence. Kevin Willard did a good job of rebuilding the program and then has done well at Seton Hall. It's like the Pirates with another big win yesterday have yep. certainly got themselves where they want to be come Selection Sunday. And you know what? This run of eight straight 20-win seasons for Iona, the first one was under Coach Willard. Wow, that is a big rebound there by Deshaun Mutt. Forget what how I long he is sometimes, yeah. right? He is explosive, long, and knockdown shots. Sam Purcell Jr. and John Severe, their two fifth-year graduate transfers onto the floor. Didn't get much out of either yesterday, especially Severe. His uh, final stat line in the quarterfinal win. Just made it like he wasn't out there. Speaking of Fordham, Severe the uh, Fordham transfer. Alternate possession. It'll stay down at this end. And yet Tim Kloos is named to the list, and uh, he is third all-time in MAC history in terms of wins behind Joe Mahalik and Jimmy Panzo. So uh, pretty good company that he keeps. Yep, Jim McDermott former commissioner of the MAC Conference, the top of that list, and then Jeff Rule, and the all-time great player and a terrific coach here at Iona as well, took the Gales to two NCAA tournaments during his time. St. Peter's with a basketball, leading by three. Here's Baker. Job defensively to keep him in front by EJ Crawford. Now with five to shoot. High ball screen. Portly in trouble. Sam Idowu just had to put it up. All he could catch was the glass, and so it's a shot clock violation. Gales that time in man to man defense and a good defensive possession. Well, St. Peter's has been to the NCAA three times as representatives of the MAC, the most recent by. Coach Dunn's hand in 2011. They also went back in 91 and 95. 
Better defense on the ball, that possession against the weave. Now Edowu backed off. I thought they could have had severe, severely punished in that corner on a double team. Hey, was in the dead corner, they let him out. Kazmir, contact, offensive foul. Well, wow, that is basically the microcosm of what St. Peter's does. It's just quarter court, man-to-man -man defense. They don't mix things up too much. They they do play ball screens differently. They'll double down and get you in some different looks when they send the second guy, but it's very simple and effective. Just tough physical man-to-man -man defense. Patterson on the floor with Griffin, and they go to Baker. Spins around Bessick, who recovers nicely. It's a little different when you're posting up Bessick and not one of those other guards. Now that's as much a jump shot by definition as you will ever see. He elevates. He also has the ball high. It's really hard to get out and challenge it. Gales get so many of their three stuck in transition and on dribble drive and kickouts. That's where they get the majority of them. Much poked it away from Portland. Much dangerous pass, and the Gales catch a break. And I'm talking about all the history in the record books with these two programs. He said uh, Iona has now uh, reached the semifinals seven times in a row. You know, the all time league record is held by St. Peter's eight times in a row back in the 80s, from 82 to 89. Iona has matched the uh, Siena run from 97 to 03 that was guided by Paul Hewitt, Louis Orr, and Rob Lanier. Three more points. John Dunn not happy with his defense. Much with eight of the 13 for the Gales. Bessick standing his ground. Great job defensively on the block. Castell Jr. got tripped inadvertently by Griffin. No call. Everybody seems to be okay. Casimir with eight on the shot clock. And a pushing foul along the baseline that sent John Severe flying. Deshaun Much off to a fast start. Conference all sorts of talent, and he can be that X Factor kind of guy. Yeah, much like Nico Clariff, he left the team for a little bit, got himself back in, and he was coming off the bench. But the last three games, as you said, he's been playing very well, and he's been doing it from the starting lineup. We talked about it yesterday. Great story. After Iona struggled coming down the stretch when they lost four out of their last seven in the regular season, Tim Kloos got upset at his first team. He didn't think they were competing, playing hard. So in practice, the second team was beating him up. He said, you know what? We're going to play winners. We're going to go three straight days. Whoever ends up winning, that's who's going to end up starting. And that's exactly what he did. It got much into the starting lineup because they were able to hold serve and win against the first team. And he's really responding. Washington back in there defending, and that's another nice job. Yeah, Welton had a couple of scores early on, but since then the post defense has really tightened up for Iona. Much rising up again, and he's already into double figures. And as you said, Doug, he gets off the floor. He rises up. He's got a high release of that three-point shot. Really hard to go out and challenge it because it releases at such a high point. 11 points for the junior out of Gates Chai Lai High School in Rochester, New York. That's already the fourth made three for Iona. If they hit 10 or more, they are just about unstoppable. 18 and 1 on the season when they hit two or more, uh, 10 or more threes. There's three back for Anechionia. Junior from Springfield, Virginia with five of the 13 points for St. Peter's. That was a huge stat for John Dunn coming in. He said, we got to defend the three-point line or we're in trouble. In each of the two games in the regular season, won by Iona, the Gales were above that 10, made three field goals mark. Wow.
Washington, the quick release. First bucket for the senior out of Jamaica, Queens. A unanimous member of the 2017 first team all conference here in the MAC. Nick Griffin. Boy, he has a pretty stroke. Third best in the league in accuracy, and uh, he buries his first attempt tonight. And he's the one guy that can get it off quickly. Saw him run off the down screen right into it. He comes out of uh, the AAU program, Team Takeover. And uh, they have produced a lot of talent. He uh, started his college career, George Washington, for transferring to St. Peter's. There's Casimir. Ion into the 1-3-1, one, one, nearly gets the turnover and does on the backcourt violation. You can see Deshaun much just sizing Griffin yeah. up. And how about his length at the yeah. point of that 1-3-1? One, one. Man, I would not want to be a ball handler trying to get around him. Kazmer out. And Ricky McGill comes back in. In for the first time for St. Peter's, Quinn Taylor. Jazz Patterson defending much. Washington. Welton kept it alive, and Patterson's got it. Washington goes to the floor and comes up with a steal. How about the quickness to get around on that post up and poke it away? For a man his size to have the quickness he does, he's quite an asset playing basketball. And again, the Gale's very active out of the matchup zone. Sam Cassell Jr. Draws the bump on Washington, who's called for the foul. And that's where he got just a little lazy. You saw the great effort on the last defensive possession, but that time a little lazy, picks up the foul. We've had ourselves some good basketball here at uh, the Times Union Center in Albany again this year, and especially our first semifinal, which uh, was a stunner. Monmouth. Squandered a 17-point second-half lead. Nico Clareth, the Siena sophomore, had the game of his life, really the half of his life. Yeah. And uh, the Saints will play the winner of this one tomorrow night for the title. Only played a couple of minutes in the first half. Missed his only shot attempt. So you knew he was just kind of laying in wait to go get 27 in the second half. You know, he, uh, he has, as a lot of great players do, uh, play with supreme confidence, and you always got to feel like the next shot's going to fall. But I wonder if, you know, put a gun to his head, did he think he was capable of doing something like that tonight, especially on a bulky angle? Well, I think he thought he was capable of it. I'm not sure anybody else did. <laughs> you know? And certainly nothing in the first 20 minutes would have uh, led you to believe that that was going to happen. Well, he only played three minutes in the first half. Washington uh, nearly got uh, away with one. It's when he's got the first foul where he's just got to play smart, play within himself, and not pick up that second because it gets him right to the bench. Patterson, nice looking rotation on that release. Taylor steals the rebound and then gets fouled by McGill. Well, McGill's coming off a tremendous performance in the uh, win over Ryder last night. A career high 25 points, six assists, and again, four steals. He leads the Mac in steals. Didn't get Defensive Player of the Year award, but uh, certainly among the better defenders in the Mac. And only one turnover as well. So that's about as good a stat line yeah. as you're going to get from your point guard. Weiss's pass kicked by Cassell Jr. So St. Peter's will keep it out of bounds on the baseline. 
Much back in. And Crawford takes a seat. Yohu down in the block, trying to now set the ball screen. Back to Idowu. That's uh, the second time it seems like here this weekend for a very good three-point shooter where he's had a really ugly-looking shot. Yeah, there was a lot of air under that one. That, that almost came down wet at hang time, but you're right. 42% on the season, so he can be a pick-and-pop, but uh, wouldn't know by that release. Posting up, but Deshaun Much, who has been hot, a little too much perhaps on that one. And a good challenge by Chaz Patterson, the defensive player of the year in the back this year, to get out and bother that shot. Once Much hit his first couple, they made the defensive switch, and now Patterson's got the assignment on Much. Goes Patterson on offense, dump it off to Dewu. Doesn't miss from there. I liked your rationale that you mentioned a couple of times, Rob, on the air about why you thought Chaz Patterson should have been, as he was, the Mac Defensive Player of the Year because he's the best defender on the best defensive team in the league. And he's also so versatile defensively to guard anybody one through four. Yeah. And whoever gets hot, that's who John Dunn then takes him and tries to put him on so that he doesn't stay hot. And he does a lot of other things, too, a lot of little things on the offensive end. Nice dribble penetration, and then the bounce pass to Fon Iduwo. All three Washington points have come at the line. Baker back, Taylor out. And in the two games against Iona, Washington's played all right. He's had double-figure scoring games in both games, but he hasn't gone wild against them. Had just 15 last time out and 11 way back in December. You know, yeah. when you're getting ready to do the game, you, you, know, you always go and see how the teams matched up in their two games. But uh, these two teams met once back on December 2nd. That's yep. like two years ago, so who cares? <laughs> You know, then their second matchup was way back at the end of January. So these teams are in different spots than they were when they met the two times in the regular season. Right? First game was a 14-point difference in Jersey City way back in early December. And then the uh, second game, the rematch went to overtime in New Rochelle, where the Gales prevailed 69-66. And I would suspect when the Mac now next year goes to 18 league games instead of 20, we may see the end of those early December matchups. What do the uh, rank and file among the head coaches in the league, the 11 of them, what do you think they feel about those early league games? Oh, they don't like it. They prefer yeah. not to. Yeah, because, you know, it, it, it it's twofold. It breaks up your non-conference schedule. And I think coaches like when those are kind of compartmentalized, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, you lose a game or two in December, your team may be completely different than it is by the time you get to the end of the year. Didn't Monmouth split its two games in December? Didn't yes, Monmouth have yep, a loss early? Yep. And then their, their other loss was to these Peacocks on January 2nd until losing to Siena tonight. Yeah, they got themselves in a three-game losing streak, started with the loss down at the Dean Dome, and then lost back-to-back -back games to start things off in December to their two New Jersey rivals in Ryder and St. Pete. Yeah. It's got sideways early on at the start of the league slate. Under four minutes remaining in the first half. Jonas sitting on a two-point lead. Much wrap around. Bessick got hammered by Baker. Those long arms allowed him to wrap all the way around the defender. Gales by two over the Peacocks. Back to the Times Union Center right after this. Here on the men's side of the joint tournament. This is the second men's semifinal. Iona and St. Peter's playing for the right to face Siena. Nine o'clock tomorrow. And 
Besick, the James Madison transfer, gets his first point. He played a couple of years for a gentleman who people in the MAC are very familiar with, Matt Brady, the former Marist head coach, who uh, was a star point guard at Siena. Although that predated Siena being in the MAC, but uh, Matt Brady originally recruited Taylor Besick out of Frankfurt High School in Philadelphia. And he's a good change of pace for Jordan Washington. Washington obviously gives him a lot more scoring, but Bessick a very good post defender. Here he is defending Welton. White from 23. And Severe comes away with it. Kasmir, step back three. Rebound, Baker. St. Peter's has been stuck on 20 for a while. And they can do that. They can have long scoring droughts, trips up the floor where they don't score the basketball, but they don't become 10 0 runs because they get stops at the other end. Yep. And certainly so far, pace a big plus so far for St. Peter's. So they'll certainly play this game in the 50s, 40s, 30s. They don't care. Yeah. Talking to uh, Tim Kloos earlier, though, he said one of the keys for us is to be patient. We can't overforce pace. We've got to be efficient and effective in what we're doing. Yeah, we want to get up and down and certainly take advantage of opportunities out on the break, but uh, we've got to be patient to find those opportunities. And that, to me, Rob, sounds like that, that can be a difficult balance yeah. to find. And sometimes when you want to force pace, you try to pick up the defense, pressure up, and uh, ask Tim about that. And he said the problem with St. Peter's, they don't fight into that. Even if you come and you pressure, they get the basketball back up. They're patient enough to reset, go ahead and run through their offense. So he said, you know, that's not the strength of our team. Yeah. And I also don't think it works against St. Peter's because uh, you really can't speed them up. The lane violation against Deshaun much allows Welton to take the free throw again, and it costs Iona a point. And you never know when those extra points are going to come back to haunt you. Think about our first semifinal game, and there was a technical foul to Josh James that didn't seem like that big a deal at the time, but the Hawks were going to be up by six. Instead, it slowed things down. Knocked down both technical foul shots, cut the lead back down to four, and then Sienna made a run from there. Iona remains stone cold from the floor. Portly to Welton. Bessick blocked it. Baker sneaks in for the ball. Nice pass. How about that? Wow. That's a little inversion. The assist from your center to your point guard. But you know, John Dunn has told both of us throughout the year that Welton has evolved into a very good passer out of the post, and we just saw it right there. And when you become a good scorer in the post, you're going to get double teams, and so you've got to expand your game. He was able to do that. Baker with another rebound. And those two guys, Trevi Weiss as well as Welton, work on their game as much as anybody. They're, they're off-season routine. They're always in the gym, and those two guys were under-recruited coming out of high school. Everybody looked at their games and focused in on some of the things that they couldn't do. All those guys have done is won more games in the back than any other senior class in St. Peter's history. And there you saw it. Welton with the offensive rebound off the Weish penetration. Yeah, this senior class of Weish, Welton, and Patterson is as accomplished as most any in St. Peter's history. The one thing lacking is a MAC championship. Yeah, they've won 44 games in the MAC. Now it's a little deceptive because you play four games in those real good St. Peter's teams in the early going in the MAC. Five of the shot clock. We've got a foul on the entry pass. Here's well feeling the double team. Nice wrap around to go find Trevi Weiss, and then Trevi Weiss on the nice drive. And there's the hustle, the effort from the big guy, Cordier Welton. And that's what both those guys do. They just outwork people. Welton, 6'8", senior from Philadelphia. Weiss, a 6'1", uh, senior from Neptune, New Jersey. And 
foul was on Baker, his second. Neither team in the bonus. St. Peter's has been called for only five fouls. Iona has just four. Cassell Jr. And there's much with a foul. So the thing that impresses me as much as anything about Travis White is that he always seems to be under control. And when everybody else, the other nine people on the floor may be going 100 miles an hour, he seems to be going 30 miles an hour and making good decisions. And with that, he leads the league in assist to turnover ratio. Yeah, and he's always on balance and always seems to have two feet on the floor. Gets into the lane, he probes, doesn't leave his feet, doesn't make many bad decisions. He's got the basketball with 10 on the shot clock. Around much and the finger roll. Timeout, Iona. 32nd timeout called by the Gales. And a good timeout right there by Tim Clues. It's the use it or lose it. And McGill of the five on the floor. And they reset the clock to 6.2 seconds on the called timeout. So plenty of time for Iona. They only need about 2.2 to get the ball up the floor and get a shot. McGill. Portly stolen. And then the foul call against McGill with 1.1 on the clock. Sixth team foul on McGill. And so let's see if St. Peter's can come up with a shot with 1.1 to play. Patterson. Welton turns, shoots. Trying to do his own mini version of Christian Leitner there. <laughs> it is hard to believe that an Iona team averaging over 80 points per game could go the final nine minutes or so of the half without hoping that uh, it's not that pattern, but the pattern they had just before that started. That's when they won six in a row. Yep. Well, if they could win six games in a row... Coming off of this win, one, lose one, they'll go on to the Sweet 16. There you go. Sign them up. St. Peter's with the basketball to begin the second half. White, Griffin, Anechionia, Patterson, and Welton. Nandi Anechionia. Well, good action there, good execution in their half court set, and Anechionia. Good three-point shooter, so when he ball fakes and shows you the basketball, you got to get out and challenge. John Severe gets the start in the second half for Iona, as does Sam Cassell Jr. Out there with Deshaun Much, who feeds Jordan Washington and spins right around Welton, but a travel is called. Well, let's see if Iona tries to pick up with a little full-court pressure to force some pace. And indeed they do. I think that's a good idea. This game is just a little bit too slow for Iona's liking right now. Ooh, close to a backboard. Much deflected that out of bounds. St. Peter's will keep. Also, Cedric Casimir starting again for Iona here in the second half. He had a quiet first half, only a couple of points. And Ricky McGill coming off the bench, presumably, because he's not the starting lineup. Yeah, this is a guy who averages the most minutes on the season for the team, coming off a 25-point performance. Welton off the terrific feed. He's now got 14. How many times do you think in the four years they've played together, somebody's called Weiss to Welton? Uh, Weiss is top five all-time in career assists at St. Peter's, and a good number of them have gone to his running mate, Mr. Welton. Washington is fouled by Welton, and uh, Iona still can't buy a bucket. Coming off, the handoff becomes a pick and roll as Jordan Washington goes to challenge. There's nobody there to pick up Quidir Welton. Not, not sure that Washington needed to give that much help on that, right? His defender basically had Weiss in front of him. He was right there. Sometimes you can overhelp. That was a good example of it. Yeah. And Weish will not be remembered necessarily in the same sentence as Kedron Clark in terms of great St. Peter's guards, but they have more similarities than you might think. 
They're the only Peacocks ever with over a thousand career points and to finish top five assists and top ten in steals in Peacocks history. They get it done in much different ways. Fifteen on the shot clock. Peacocks fortunate to keep. And that's why I like the pressure defense for Iona because it forces St. Peter's to play a little quicker. White. This time calls his own number. But after you get out of the pressure defense, then you got to guard for the possession in the man or zone. Doesn't matter in the quarter court once you get back there. It's not all just about coming up with the steal. You then got to be able to transition to play smart D. Severe for two. First points of the MAC tournament for the Fordham transfer. He played 18 scoreless minutes last night, took only one shot. This from a guy that scored over 1,250 points in his college career. Welton called for the offensive foul. A nice job. You talked about it, how he always stays under control. Trevi Weiss gets himself into the lane, and there's a tough, deep, guarded, challenged two-point shot. But Iona has not been able to find many good looks in the last 10 minutes of play. Yeah, that's their only field goal during that stretch to speak of. And they go to Washington. Money in the bank for number 23. And their first points in the paint of the ball game. They got to keep force feeding. They got to figure out a way to get Jordan Washington more involved. Off the turnover. Much. McGill back into the game. Cassell called for the ball, got it, and buried the triple. Now much like they did in the first half, not only forcing turnovers, but turning them into points at the other end. And so now Sevier and Cassell, who came off the bench in the first half, start the second half, have each come up with their first points tonight. Welton. Cassell Jr. off to McGill, up to Severe for three, and the Gales are getting going. And John Dunn needs to call a timeout because the Gales, just like that, changed the pace of the game and have changed the score. And Tim Kloos to pick up in full court pressure and try and create a little more pace to the ball game. His team has responded. Remember, this is St. Peter's team that does not turn the basketball over. Top 25 in the country at less than 11 turnovers per game, but they have kicked it around here tonight. St. Peter's leads the MAC in a number of categories. Points allowed, field goal percentage defense, three-point field goal percentage, turnover margin, and defensive rebounds. At the offensive end, Griffin misfires. Washington gives chase, and it's McGill who comes away with it, giving it back to the big fella. Well, their defense is what has created the pace for them on the offensive end. Eleven unanswered points for the Gales. Severe gets called for the foul. And that takes us to our first media time out of the second half. How will the St. Peter's Peacocks adjust? Now down three. These teams have made the trip upstate. For St. Peter's coming from Jersey City, New Jersey. And for Iona making the drive up from New Rochelle, New York. And the Peacocks with the ball trying to snap an 11-0 run put on the board by the Gales. Antoine Portley has come in. He is capable of putting points on the board. Kavon Baker now with it. And the former Houston Cougar left alone. Thinks about it. Washington begged him to shoot it. He did miss by him. He's begging him to shoot it. Baker didn't want to take the bait. Baker's a good outside shooter on the season, 44% from three, but didn't look like he had the confidence to take that shot. Do you think that was a calculated move by Washington, who's going to have a chance for three? Was it a calculated move by Washington, or did he lose sight of the fact that Baker's a very good three-point shooter? No, I think he didn't want to come out and challenge that far out. 
but he's certainly not afraid to go challenge on no. the offensive glass. He'll mix it up. Much like the quarterfinal game, Washington a non-factor in the first half and coming alive here in the second. Had 16 in the quarterfinal win against Ryder, 14 of those in the second half. Here tonight, Robbie had no field goals in the first half and now 13 total points very early on here in the second. Washington is fourth in the MAC in points per game, fifth in rebounds per game, and he draws the charge. Well, that was the uh, I Love New York key matchup we talked about off the top. Welton and Washington going head to head. Welton has just picked up his third personal foul, and this matchup again may wind up ultimately dictating the winner of this semifinal. And Welton's the guy that was winning that match matchup early in the game. Certainly in the first half, he completely outplayed him. But in the second half, Jordan Washington has changed that script, no doubt. And so Quadir Welton takes a seat with three personals. Sam Idowu has come in, and immediately the Gales get a layup. And they're just playing through the big guy. Ricky McGill's first bucket makes it 40 throughout the game. Right. Someone like me is always quick with five minutes to go. Hey, you're up 14. Oh, Why yeah. don't you start relax, resting, relax. guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do get that. I understand because uh, it's a zero-sum industry, and no matter how good a job Tim Kloos has done today and throughout the season, and no matter how good a job John Dunn has done this year and throughout the season, the reality is one of them is going to be labeled a loser tonight as the result of their night's work. Samuel, uh, Samuel Adowu snaps that long run and gets St. Peter's back on the board. And gets Jordan Washington tagged with another foul here late as well. Again, Washington comes and challenges and gets late for the second challenge. Both times he's overhelped on Trevi Weiss a little bit. Second foul on Washington. You and I both struggled a little bit with uh, Samuel Idowu's name tonight. Usually I think we're okay with him, exactly. but uh, he's gotten us both. We, I apologize. I do too. Sophomore from Brooklyn. Now has five points. Draws the Peacocks back to within five. Here's where St. Peter's got to get back down on the defensive end. Lock down and make it more difficult for Iona. McGill, catch and shoot three, too strong. Here comes Travis Weish, looks for a trailer, it's Portly. Good look, just couldn't finish. Cassell Jr. And Weish just bats it up off the glass, and Dilwu gets the rebound. Three-point bucket, and here come the Peacocks. Well, you go behind the screen because you figure Weiss, who's gotten into the lane all game long, he's going to try to get there again. Instead, able to tee it up. He had plenty of time to eye that three. Washington draws the contract, uh, contact. Andy Dowu gets the foul. Well, he had his hand straight up, but he was walking in and underneath them, and... Because he was walking in, that's where the contact was created. Good call. Will Jordan Washington get a look in an NBA Summer League? Does he have that sort of chance coming up? Here in 2017, Rob. I believe he will because he's got the size and athleticism and he's got some numbers as well. But he can do some stuff that a lot of guys his size can't. Well, Iona had three of its own in the NBA Summer League last year. None of the three made rosters this year. Two are overseas and uh, David Lowry playing in the D League. Iona's most recent NBA player, Scott Machado, the brilliant point guard who led the nation in assists per game for Iona. 
he was uh, some of the talent, just one of the talented players who Tim Kluse inherited when he took over uh, after Coach Willard left for Seton Hall. Yeah, he inherited a bad Iona, but he was also his high school coach early on in his career out at St. Mary's. So he just kind of got him back, I yeah. guess. A lot of contact on that sequence. We get the foul off the ball against Much. And that was a match made in heaven in terms of styles with Kloos and Machado. No question about that. Machado finished up his high school career at St. Benedict's, played for Dan Hurley, coach at URI. How about that win last night for Rhode Island? Wow. Keep their at-large hopes alive. Block shot at the buzzer to force overtime, and yeah. then they made good on the extra opportunity. Beating Davidson in a game that they had to have. Foul on White. Well, it is champ week. There was a, a thriller today in the Patriot League in the semis. Boston University and uh, Lehigh went to double overtime. And Lehigh wound up winning that game. It's a fun time of year. Yeah, see Kempton with a couple of big yeah. finishes late. He was blocking yep. shots all over the place. One of those active 2,000-point scorers in the country that a lot of people don't know about. They know his dad, Tim Kempton, but uh, his son... Pretty darn good player in his own right. John Severe, all eight of his points have come since the break. Making his coach look smart for putting him back into the starting lineup. Dewu dives to the pole. He's got McGill trying to defend him, but his teammates go the other way to Baker. Doe says, I'm going to get that ball in here. Portly, good ball fake. Patterson again keeps the ball alive for St. Peter's. Somebody's got to take one of those open looks. How many shot fakes on that possession? Now, there are a lot. But every once in a while, if you're open, you got to be able to step in and make a shot. Little tentative on that possession for the Peacocks. Severe, not tentative. That was not a good shot. Step back two. Baker wow. just soars oh. for the rebound. Wow. He's 6 he 1. Besick is 6 9. And Besick never had a chance. We'll step away with it's, uh, it's interesting. I, I would suspect that there's not a whole lot of conferences across the country that haven't had their number one seed win a championship since back in 2010. Yeah, I wonder. I'd be curious to see that data. And, you know, in the big conferences, if, you know, team in the ACC doesn't win after winning the regular season title, who cares? You know, so they fall from the one line to the two line. Where in leagues like this one, it means everything. Idowu with seven. St. Peter's got a real good look coming out of that timeout. Let's see what Iona's got. Ricky McGill back in at the point. Kazmir. And I find it interesting, Coach Dunn saying, we want to play with pace, we just don't need to shoot it so fast. What exactly does that mean? Well, you got to cut, you got to move without the basketball, you got to force them to guard you throughout possessions. You can't stand around. Peacocks just keep working the offensive glass, and they content, uh, continue to extend possessions. Uh, Griffin was open, and they missed him. And in spite of all that hard work on the offensive glass, only six second chance points for St. Peter's. Seven to shoot. Idowu spins away from Besic and puts up an air ball. Much rising up way off the mark. He had a quick start to the game. Haven't heard much from him since. No pun intended. Another turnover for St. Peter's. 13. And they've turned into 18-2. 
advantage in points off turnovers. That's the whole ball game right there. This is St. Peter's team, Doug, that usually doesn't beat themselves. We've said it before. They're in the top 25 in the country and fewest turnovers per game, averaging less than 11. Yep. Not tonight. Three to shoot, so Severe has to chuck it. And, and the buzzer stay. had gone off, but the ball clearly had hit the rim. Yeah, so it should just have a... been a reset. But the ball was going out of bounds, so it should just be whoever saved it out of bounds. Forget the buzzer. Play on. Ball right. went out of bounds. Who was the last to touch? Yep. But sometimes when you hear that buzzer as a player, your natural reaction is to stop. Clearly the ball. Oh, I tell you what. I thought it had hit the rim. So did I. It may not have. And remember, that is a situation now where they can go to the monitor to check that. They have missed one right there. But I thought clearly live that it hit the rim. Me too. From so, our angle, we both thought for sure it hit the rim. Yep. So I can see why they didn't go to check it. Washington draws the double team. Saw Griffin come into the right, so he spun left and put it in. Absolutely. And what they do is they run the double once he starts dribbling the basketball. So as soon as he put it down, but you're right, he had the vision to see where it was coming from and turned away. White met at the rim, and Severe gets the foul. Now Jordan Washington was quiet in the first half, but he is woken up here in the second half. They're starting. And he has stayed out of foul trouble. Early on, St. Peter's was trying to pound the basketball inside to Welton. That worked. Lately, they've gone away from it. Well, our esteemed statistician Dave Freeman pointed out to me while I was talking about uh, Mr. Weish and Mr. Clark, they both wear the uniform number three. And I, uh, I'm i just not a uniform number guy. I don't remember that yep. sort of stuff. Dave is a proud St. Peter's alumnus, so that stuff is seared somewhere in his brain. Now that you say you do remember Kiki with three. Yeah. Yep. He could throw up those threes. But, yeah, and that's surprising because, you know, if you think about a number that should be retired for St. Peter's, Kiki Clark's got to be at the top of that list. You think? 3,000 career points. McGill hits the triple. Well, good extra pass by Severe to find McGill in the corner. That's what's so hard about Iona. They can stretch out with so many guys from beyond the three-point line. They've got three of the top five in the league and three-point field goal percent. White. A two for number three. 11 points, matching his season average, and it draws the Peacocks back within six. Here's Washington before the double team could come, but he misses the jump hook. That was a good post move. And I like the way they brought him out to the perimeter and then dive him into the post so he's not a sitting target for that double. Welton gives it back to Baker. And it poked away. Welton picks up the free ball and lays it in. Now here's where St. Peter's, if they can put together a string of a couple of stops to get themselves right back in. They're back in already, only trailing by four. Washington. See, as soon as he puts it on the floor, that's when the double comes. And with Welton going to the floor, Washington was alone for his own putback. And it's funny. Iona's only got five offensive rebounds, but they've turned them into ten second-chance points. Pretty good. Taking advantage of every extra opportunity. Good hands by Welt. Yeah, tough pass by Griffin in between two of his teammates. And they need him to make some threes. Griffin's their best three-point shooter, and he really hasn't gotten on track in either game. 
here in Albany. No, only three points tonight on one triple. He's third in the conference at 44%. Cassell, good looking shot from the foul line area. And he got the good shot because he moved without the basketball. Iona got all spread out. They spread the defense with him. Wide open at the high post. He made himself available and was shot ready. Just over five minutes to go. Siena awaits the winner in the MAC title game. Costly turnover again for St. Peter's. Devon Baker out. And Chaz Patterson comes in. And if you're looking for a stop or two or three, like you said, Rob, a string of stops, good to get Patterson back out there. The defensive player of the year in the match. Jordan Washington is calling for the ball to his teammate and using both his first and last name. John Sevier. In case John didn't know, he was talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> the other John out on the floor. <laughs> Tough pass at another Peacock's turnover. The 15th for St. Peter's. They just have not taken care of the basketball good enough here for John Dunn. against Griffin. A strong finish with the left. Oh, he got by him by just about a half a step and then the lefty finish in traffic. Big bucket there for the Gales to stretch it back out to double figure lead. Grad student out of Christ the King High School now with 10 points. Griffin no. Welton able to track it down. This is St. Peter's team that's not built to come back from big deficits. They kind of grind it out offensively. They've got to find a way to get something going if they're going to cut into this lead. John Severe with a good move to his left. And it so he's sitting on 20. Deshaun much with 11. John Severe with 10. All of those coming in the second half. Welton has 16 to lead the Peacocks. Weish with 13. Baker back in. Washington's going to be called for the foul. Says I didn't touch him. But you'd expect for him to say that. Of course, but what you don't want is to pick up a technical by running with the basketball in your hand down to the other end. They're up by 10. Don't worry about it. First semifinal, we saw a technical foul called against Monmouth that turned out to be very costly. Absolutely. No technical here, though. Just the personal foul that sends Welton to the free throw line. And on Mr. Washington, that is his third personal. For Welton. And if you're wondering, also Ricky McGill and Deshaun Much applying with three fouls. For St. Peter's, only Welton has three. Nobody worse off than that on either side. Severe so trying to get around Patterson, who takes that challenge. Forced a tough shot. The Peacocks have it back. That's what they need to do. They've got to come up with stops. White creates some space and then missed the easy shot. McGill sees that it's a lot of white jerseys in front of him. Knows they're up by eight. He turns around and says, let's work a little clock and get a good shot. That was a missed opportunity there for St. Peter. White point blank just uh, put it a little too hard. Severe is going to be called for the grab on the arm of Welton after Welton stole the ball from him. Yeah, that was a good call. Clearly, Severe 
Grab the hold once. Quadir Welton, the big guy. Jumps the screen, sees an opportunity right there. Severe got the basketball away from him. That's a terrific call. Third foul on Severe. And so he'll take a seat. Catch his breath. Looks like he's holding that left hand or thumb a little bit. Deshaun Mutch said Kazmir. Sam Cassell Jr., Jordan Washington, and Ricky McGill defending for Iona. And Iona in the matchup. Weiss tries from the right side and can't connect. And then Cassell Jr. gets fouled. It was action after the whistle. That's the third on Baker. And the seventh against St. Peter's. So now both teams are in the bonus. And we will walk to the other end. And when you're down by eight and you're trying to fight your way back in the ball game, if you get dribble penetration all the way into the lane, you got to be able to convert. Here's a good look at Sam Cassell. He does look like his daddy. Sam Jr. played his high school ball at St. Francis Academy. He grew up in Baltimore. Of course, his dad was a sensational player at Florida State University. And then went on to a long NBA career. Spent 15 seasons at that level as a player. Three times winning championships, including twice with the Houston Rockets. And now St. Peter's can't be as patient offensively. On cue, Baker put it up. And St. Peter's has gone cold here in the last few minutes. Looked like Weish might have almost been trying to give up the foul. Don't think he was, but uh, the whistle finally comes. So it's Patterson who gets called for it. And so another one and one. It'll send said Casman. I mentioned in the first half during last night's press conference for Iona. Tim Clouse was asked if he was concerned about Seth Casimir coming back and playing 24 hours later and, uh, you know, the toll that it's taken on his body with those three surgeries. And they both joked that it's going to be no, no problem. Said guaranteed he's going to be <laughs> fine. And uh, so the coach was quite confident that his redshirt sophomore was going to come up with another big performance. Well, he's been able to play the minutes, but so far only three points. That's kind of the way his year has gone. But it's always a good sign to be able to see him out there playing. Now Casimir goes out. He's actually holding yeah, his holding left his hip. hip. Yep. Oh, that's too bad. And again, the back-to-back -back game's got to be hard yeah. on his body. But you want him in late in the game because such a good foul shooter, 93% on the season. But uh, he might be done for the night. Portly high off the window for his first two. And the quick timeout gone. Well, while we've got a moment, I know uh, for Rob Kennedy, I'd like to... 152 Iona. The Gales are a minute 50 away from getting back to the MAC championship game for a fifth consecutive year. And as we said, that would uh, be six out of seven in the Tim Clouse era. In any league, if you get to the championship game six out of seven times, that is a dominant stretch. 22 for Washington. Yeah, no doubt about that, Rob. And in the four previous finals, Coach Clouse and his Gales are two and two. Portly. That's five points for Portly. But back to the other end, Ricky McGill lays it in. And also a lot of credit to Pat Lyons, who was the Iona AD, who lost Kevin Willard to Iona, or excuse me, to Seton Hall, and then had to find a coach. Tip Clouse, a guy who had success in high school, junior college, Division II level. A lot of times, ADs won't take a chance on a guy like that. Right. They want a guy with Division I experience. Pat Lyons stepped up. Choices with Washington, but a little up and under to finish through traffic. Jordan Washington with a big second half to key a big second half for the Gales. Iona Fowle. That's, Much picks up his fourth, and that's about as bad a play as you could possibly have. For sure. If you're Iona. Portly. He's been feeling it. 
Another swish. And much with those four fouls, didn't want to challenge and guard him. We're down to five points here. Cassell fouled by Patterson. That's the ninth team foul against the Peacocks. So just a one and one. Coming up for Iona. Portley's been the offensive spark here late. And now Cassell, 83% on the year. He is one of two from the line tonight. And he will now get the bonus. And Iona, very good foul shooting team overall, 76%. Tops in the MAC. It's always so important when you're trying to close out close ball game. Big free throws for Cassell Jr. Let's see if St. Peter's tries to go back to Portland. All ten of his points have come in the last minute. Here's White. He narrow, nails the three. And it's a four-point game. Able to hide behind that high ball screen. Now you've got to give up the foul. Baker does just that. And Severe will shoot two. That's the tenth team foul. Uh, against St. Peter's. I like the way St. Peter's go ahead and trap. Yep. See if you can't come up with the uh, basket in the backcourt, a steal. Hiding behind the high ball screen. Trevi Weiss steps right into it. Even with Jordan Washington trying to get out there and challenge. Sevier's got 11 points, all coming since the intermission. How about when you get all your guards? McGill, 80%. Cassell, 83%. Severe, 84%. And then Kazmir, who's obviously was banged up a little bit, but now coming back into the ball game at 93%. It's a nice uh, luxury for Tim Kloos. He has a team. They lead the Mac at 76% on free throws. And as you said, Kazmir, he once made 44 straight free throws, which is an all-time Mac record. And now Cassell will go back to the line. Tell you what, Portley almost yeah. hit that one. They needed a little bit more of that offensive firepower from Portley earlier in the game. First 38 minutes, though, they didn't get any offense from him. And so St. Peter's stuck six with 36 and a half seconds to go. Devon Baker has fouled out, and so he is over to the bench, and Nick Griffin has taken his place. It's been a long and winding road for Kevon Baker. Played his freshman year at Florida Atlantic University. Then his sophomore year at Lee Junior College, just east of Houston. Then junior year, he played at the University of Houston before now playing his senior year at St. Peter's. Need a road map to keep track, but uh, he is nearing the end of the line. Jan Svanderlich into the game for the first time, defending, and looks like he's going to be called for with a personal. Shot clock is off with 29.3 remaining. White at the line, 78% of the year. Second team all Mac this year. Second team last year as a junior as well. Washington returns. Sponsor look out. If he hits this, we're back down to a two possession ball game. So still enough time. You got to come up with some steals though. McGill to inbound. Finds Cassell. Back to McGill with all sorts of open floor. He's going to go in and lay it up. 73-65. Now that's the way you beat pressure. Portland misfires. 
McGill gets the rebound, and it looks like the Peacocks have called off the Wolves. Sam Cassell Jr. recognizes that, and in a nice move of sportsmanship, will just dribble it out. Iona and Siena finish the regular season tied in third place. They're going to play tomorrow night for a spot in the NCAA tournament. And they split the two regular season meetings, and for the fifth consecutive year, Tim Clouse's team will play it.